Okay, so I want to comment on a sort of a response to a video I've just seen. Um, it's an unpleasant video, but I think it does raise some important issues. Um, basically, the video shows two young men. Um, for one, the first guy, uh, they look like they're arguing with a young woman. Um, it says it's a crowded street. It looks like it's beside a train station or something. It's in Sweden. These young men are arguing with the woman. One of them strikes her pretty forcefully. Um, and then when she's on the ground, the other lays into her as well. Uh, so these guys are basically beating up a woman. Um, regardless of what the argument is about, their actions are clearly hardly despicable. And um, I believe that such men need to be beaten to a bloody pulp. That's my own views on the matter. Um, I know the left wouldn't agree with that, but I think such men need to be absolutely... Uh, you know, there's nothing in that video that would suggest any justification for what happened, even if she insulted them or something, uh, to do what they done to a woman. Well, for any to do that to anyone, for that matter, is, unless it's absolutely self-defense, is, is disgusting. Um, but what caught my attention was the headline of the video was, two Muslim immigrants beat up women. Now, um, this is almost certainly from the far-right source. Uh, I'm not so stupid, that's quite obvious because the initiative here is to try and demonize all Muslim men, They're saying this is the way these barbarian Muslims behave in European lands. And it's a narrative that we have to be extremely careful about. Why? Because it's just wrong to generalize all Muslims. Um, in the Paris attacks, there was a Muslim security guard whose actions, I don't know if he lost his life or not, but either way, he clearly showed courage and his actions prevented a lot of deaths. Had that bomb went ahead inside the stadium, we would have been looking at probably scores killed. As it turned out, there were people killed there, but it would have been a lot worse. Um, now, people might say that was his job anyway, but there's no question about it. He showed incredible courage. He was a Muslim, and there were Muslim victims in Paris. And there were many, many examples of courage from all sorts of people, but that included Muslims. The reason why this is important to say is because the far right will use this as an opportunity to reel against everyone who happens to come from an Islamic background, and that's dangerous. Um, just to be clear, I'm not a Nambi Pambi lefty when it comes to issues of crime. I believe these scumbags need to be incarcerated for a very long time, um, and I am very critical of the Nordic justice model. I believe it's a bit of a joke, to be quite honest, because being Sweden, probably all that will happen to these guys is they'll get a fine and they'll be told off um, when they should be incarcerated for a very long time. And uh, I think that Scandinavian prisons are a bit of a joke, to be quite honest. That doesn't mean I support hellhole prisons. I had a discussion with a friend about this the other day. I, I don't advocate hellhole prisons. I don't think that helps anyone, but at the same time, I'm very sceptical of the, the holiday camps that constitute Scandinavian prisons, because to me, it's just not justice. Um, but the, the reason I'm talking about this in the context of this video, and I've put a link underneath. Uh, the reason I don't put a link in annotations is because I'm not sure if you can click on it in the same way as the information box. Um, you know, obviously, we don't know the whole context of what's happening there, what the nature of the argument is. But regardless, there's no justification for what these guys are doing. Now, from what I can see, the conjecture that they are Muslims is solely because they're they're dark skinned. They look like either North Africans or um, from the Middle East. But that's purely conjecture. Uh, you know, there's nothing to suggest that was any sort of Islamist incident. You know, they're not shouting Alo Akbar or anything like that. It looks to me like they're just common thugs. Um, I might be wrong. Might be, you know, it might be motivated by racism. Uh, I don't know. Um, I hope the young woman is has recovered. It must be have been a traumatic experience to go through. You know, I've been attacked on the street, and um, uh, you know, it's it's not a pleasant thing when a total stranger attacks you for no reason. Um, all I can say is if that was my girlfriend, those guys would not be standing 
and I'm not saying that to be bravado, it's a God honest truth. Um, I, I have very limited patience with uh, with criminal thugs, and um, you know, that's that, that's all I want to say. That we need to be very very careful about some of the information that far right groups are putting around. Um, now, in terms of Sweden and its policies, I do think they seriously need to reconsider multiculturalism. Um, and I think generally the attacks do mean that European societies in general need to reconsider multiculturalism. They there blindly promote this idea without thinking at all of the consequences. And what galls me is that anyone who questions it is immediately labelled a racist or or you know, labelled as being sympathetic to the far right. Well, as this video surely demonstrates, I said that we need to be cautious about far right distortion. But we also, I think it needs to be said that the far, that the left, I was going to say the far left, but actually the left in general need to wake up. Um, you know, and especially, this is especially obvious in countries like Sweden and Norway, to some extent Germany, um, this idea of accept multiculturalism and that is it and if you question it you must be a hateful horrible islamophobic racist etc etc is utter stupidity it is the most natural thing in the world that any country has some reflection on what is happening in its society and i do believe that in europe in some ways we are far too tolerant now don't get me wrong i am not um I'm not anti-immigration. I believe that it is uh, important that developed democracies play a role in providing safe haven for people who really need it. I also believe that tolerance can be a good thing. But I also believe that tolerating the intolerant is the epitome of stupidity. And that's something the left just can't get into their heads. I'm saying this as a centrist. I think, uh, and it's why I don't, consider myself left wing because it's issues like this i think so much of the left not everyone but so much of the political left is woefully out of touch with common sense um and you know th this idea that sweden is a socialist utopia i think is a bit misguided the fact of the matter is there have been crimes in cities like malmo and gothenburg that overwhelmingly are committed by young immigrant men. This is not scaremongering, it is just the facts. Um, and I think that Sweden really, really needs to evaluate its policies. Um, that applies to any country. This doesn't mean that it is okay to demonize all Muslim men or, or otherwise, but the fact is there are certain, um, especially from certain parts of the world, there are cultural attitudes that if we turn a blind eye to, we're going to regret it. An example of this is the child abuse scandals in the north of England. In those cases, it was overwhelmingly young white girls who were victims, not universally. There were some Asian victims as well, but overwhelmingly young white girls were the victims and overwhelmingly the perpetrators were Pakistani gangs. This is a fact. And to be fair, there were some Labour MPs at the time who tried to do something about it, but they were sort of shackled by the political correctness of their own party. Um, and the left just will not wake up. It, does that mean that all paedophiles are Pakistani men? Of course not. And this is one of the things that, you know, people say, oh, well, uh, you know, Rolf Harris and so on, they're, they're white guys, they're paedophiles. But the point is not about not saying all paedophiles are Pakistani, it's saying that there was a specific problem in towns like Rochdale, Rotherham and elsewhere. This is just reality. And if you can't name a problem, then how on earth are you going to tackle it? Also, it's important to point out there were some in the Pakistani community who recognised this was a problem and have tried to do something about it. But again, I believe there is a problem with the wall of silence. Um, it is an absolute abomination when political correctness and cultural sensitivities take precedence over protecting vulnerable young women. To me, that's perverse. And 
if we learn anything from Rotherham, it should be that where there is a legitimate fear of something going on, it shouldn't be up to, you know, the police need to be given the freedom to act on it. Politicians need to be given the freedom if they think that something is going on in their constituency, they need to be able to speak out about it without being branded a racist. You know, this is, to me, it's absolutely, the deaf should be ashamed of themselves themselves is they are partly to blame for what happened in Rotherham insofar as they provided an atmosphere whereby questioning it would be deemed racist and in my opinion they still haven't fully answered to that um, so what I'm saying is that where crimes do occur uh, and it is specifically a certain group that is committing those crimes then society needs to discuss the problem um i mean look i am not for a second here saying that all crimes are committed by a certain group i i uh, was forced to leave my home at the age of 16. Now, the gangs that were tormenting my family were white british gangs so you know there's no shortage of thugs in that demographic either and i'm not for a second suggesting that that is the case but people need to have the platform to express outrage where it's justified and uh, that's all i'm saying so let me know your thoughts